we need to listen to the words of one of our own. And we also have um, many, many of you to recognize this evening for the contribution that you brought uh, to OSS and to Sterehe. So if I could ask you if, again, if you remember those lessons we had before we went for the parties at Kenya High School, that um, the mouth is supposed to do one thing at a time. And cutlery is not a musical instrument. So if we respect those uh, two rules, then I think we will benefit uh, from the words that we are going to listen to next. And it gives me great pleasure to invite to speak to us our chief guest this evening, one of our own, a man I can say I celebrate for living the OSS vision of leading and transforming society. Please put your cutlery down for a few minutes and put your hands together and welcome Dr. Julius Kipnetich. Okay, thank you very much, Josephat. It's a great pleasure for me to be here this evening amongst brothers and sisters who have gone through Stare, plus their friends, their spouses. It feels very good to have, I think this is the largest OSS dinner we have had. Well done, the team of Josephat Maura. It takes a lot of efforts to bring all Starians to an event like this because it requires some skill, some influence to bring all of you together like this. And I would like to commend Josephat Moura and the current team of OSS for providing something which is lacking in this part of the world which is just one simple word, leadership. So well done. I'm happy about today's theme, which is charity begins at home, because for a large number of you, Stare was home. And we are here today as privileged people of this planet. And I use the word privilege deliberately because if you went through Stare, you are truly, truly, truly a privileged person. The reason being, Stare is first and foremost around Square School. And all of you know the principles of round Square Schools. Stare exhibited those principles even before admission to Round Square. And so therefore, it was natural that Stare then was invited to join Round Square, and it was the first school in Kenya to be a member of Round Square. There are around 100 such schools around the world, and so therefore, if you went through Stare, you are truly privileged. And for those of you who are invitees of all Stareans, both boys and girls, either you are a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a spouse, husband, wife, I'm sure you have been robbed by the Stare spirit. And we invite you to be truly members of the all Starian community. You have been trained by this privileged school to provide something very simple. 
which is servant leadership to the world. And today, I'll be addressing just two themes of what a servant leader should do. But before I do that, I just want to say something about Stare. When you came to Stare, you are that innocent child who was in need. By the time you left Stare, you had been given wings to fly. And most of you are still flying, and I encourage you never to stop. Stare, as Griffin used to say, is not to, for people to be sparrows. If you ever become a sparrow and you are an old Starayan, it will be a tragedy. Because then, in my view, it will be a wasted life. Stare trains you to be an ego, to fly high, to wash that coffee cup like nobody has washed it before. And so therefore, whatever station in life you are in, please, and I beg you, leave the true spirit of Stare and wash that cup like it has never been washed before. If you do that, you will have done your part on this planet and the earth will be better because of you. And the day you meet St. Peter, you will truly be saying, Lord, I'm coming home. I've done my part and I have come to rest. If you don't do it, future generations will condemn you, but I'm sure St. Peter will show you the other door and say, this, you have brought all your qualifications, including that of being an old Starian, and St. Peter will tell you, I don't need it here. And you'll have led a wasted life. Stare is a school which should be, and in time to come, will produce Nobel Prize winners. And I'm sure. I am no doubt in my mind, the 14,000 of us who have come out of Stare and all future Stareans, there are several Nobel Prize winners sitting there. What we are asking you, if you truly live the Stare spirit, it will come in time to come. It will be there. And I'm asking you, let it be you. Today, we are asking you to do your part. And so therefore, my first theme tonight is let us give back to Stare. Why should you give back? When the founders of Stare, Griffin, Geturo, and Kikubo, when they founded the school, they gave us a very simple message, which you heard every time you left the school, which is the charge. That in time to come, Within your means, you give back to Stare. That time has now come. And for those of you who probably thought that Stare only needs cash, that is not true. The best gift you can give to Stare is not money. The best gift you give Stare is your time and energy. The boys in the school, the boys in the school require mentors, require coaches, require sisters, require brothers. Please, we want each one of you to give Stare your time. It doesn't cost you anything. Each of us in the world has only 24 hours. It is how we use the 24 hours that matters most. That is why there are those in the world who, like Bill Gates, have wealth of $83 billion, and all of us collectively as Kenyans are just worth $60 billion. <laughs> Bill Gates does not have more than 24 hours like you and me. 
All of us have 24 hours. It is how we use our 24 hours. I want each one of you to commit yourself to give back to the Stare family, both the boys and girls, by giving your time and energy first. A check will come later. If you truly believe in the spirit of Stare, please give back. It doesn't cost you much. I would like to see most of you spend a weekend, spend an evening, support the school. Because that was the charge. And I have no doubt that Griffin in heaven is watching over us. In my office, in every office I've been to, I always have a picture of Geoffrey Griffin. And I tell him, watch over me. I want you to give me inspiration and courage so that then I can give back to society. I believe I have tried to give back. That is why I'm in the board of the girls' school and the boys' school. It's not because I have more hours. It's because I am more disciplined in how I use my hours. Many of us do things which really don't matter in life, okay? You can chat in a pub for five hours. You can use the most inefficient means to reach Moranga. It is possible to give time to Stare. As you give time to Stare, I would like to urge you to join OSS. The whole Starian society, the way we are conceptualizing now as the managing committee of the school, is this is the institution that will eventually own the Starian schools. You will be the shareholders of the schools. When Griffin designed the constitution of the school, he had designed it around himself. But he knew that the boys, because of the charge, will always take care of the school. We will create instruments for you to engage the school, but we need a shareholder. And that shareholder is you and me. And in time to come, shareholders then are required to provide capital. Within your means, I would like you to buy your shares in Stare. It will not be in a share certificate with so many shares. It will be what you give to the school in your heart. And just like every shareholder, I would not like you to go and disturb the director every day and tell him, where are my dividends? Dividends are always given in an AGM. In Founders Day, we would expect the director to give us his report card. And that is the dividend we will be expecting every year. And so therefore, please, I would like you to join OSS, a forum for networking, a forum for mentoring, a forum for coaching. OSS is truly your home. And if OSS is your home, then you own Stare then you give back to Stare, because Stare belongs to you. There are 14,000 of us, and in years to come, there will be many more. I can tell you, Stare cannot defeat us. I was in Stare from 1979 to 1984, and my sponsor was a group of teachers in Canada. All of you know the salary of teachers. If teachers who are teaching a primary school in Canada could sponsor somebody like me, how can 14,000 of us be defeated by just supporting 1,000 boys and girls? What we are lacking is the commitment because we are observing from a distance. And I am charging you today, each one of you, 
to support the two schools and make your contribution as a shareholder. Is that too difficult? Do we say yes? That's a feeble yes. Do we say yes? yes. Well done. So, Maura, we have a commitment, and that is my charge. The second aspect of today's, my today's comment is beyond the beyond stare, what should an old starean do and be? Because you are a privileged child, I have four challenges for you today that you must reflect on, that you must internalize, because with your education and the character that Stare molded you, you have a responsibility to the world. Four simple things. The first one is the explosion of technology. The world is changing so fast. It is the first time in history that the world will be connected by some technological revolution. With that explosion of technology, what does it mean for somebody who went to a privileged school? But let's just, let me just give you examples of some of the things that where the world is going. In the next three years, 80% of all mobile phones in the world will be smartphones. Don't worry about the make. Some of you will have iron phones from Apple, of course. Others will have some cheap things from China whatever name you call them, Ching Ching and things like those. <laughs> what does it mean to the world when we have a mobile revolution? And what does an old Starian mean, do? We are also in a world of social media. Whatever happens now, you can broadcast to the world. Mainstream media are unsure of what to do. For example, if you are in a media house and you still call nine o'clock prime time news, then the word prime needs to be redefined. <laughs> because by nine o'clock, the pope will have talked has made three speeches already in Uganda, has made another speech, and they, they, they still call it news. Of course, that's no longer news. That should be called post-mortem of the day. We are in a world of unprecedented technology. Look at the internet of things. I know some of you probably are confusing it with the word internet of yesterday. The current terminology even has moved on and called it the internet of things, the internet of everything. What does it mean to everyday life? I'll give you an example. It will mean if you come to Uchumi, for example, Each item will have a chip. Let's suppose you go to the fridge section. The fridge will start talking to you. It will connect to your mobile phone. It will check your bank balance. It will know your credit worthiness. And then it will make an offer to you and say, I am on sale. I know you can afford. And in the event that you can't afford, I know the branch manager. I can negotiate a loan for you. <laughs> I would like to be part of your home. That's the internet of things for you. 
I was privileged to see computers land in Stare for the first time in 1980. And for those of you who are in Stare in 1980, there used to be a famous Australian called Mr. Wilson. And he brought terminals to Stare, and the then president of Kenya opposed it openly, and it was in the press. That I went to Stare, I saw some computers, and it is going to make people redundant. Of course, it didn't. And 35 years later, computers have caused a revolution. What does it mean, therefore, to an old Starian who is privileged? My advice to you is align computer technology to your profession. I know most of you go to highly priced courses at the university. I recall a quarter of the class at the School of Business at the University of Nairobi comes from Stare. In the medical school, another quarter. I would like to tell you the next Nobel Prize winners for science, whichever science, most likely physics, will come from somebody who understands where computer technology is going. An old Starian surely, surely should win a Nobel Prize for computer technology. And let it be you, because you are a privileged child. Technology is going to change the world in a way which you have never, ever imagined in your life. Please be part of emerging technology, because it's your responsibility to change the world. Any leader who does not understand technology today really cannot lead the world. The second challenge is inequality. This is something which has been written by many economists, but I will start by giving you a figure which should shock you. 0.7% of the world population controls 41% of the world's wealth. I know you have not internalized, let me repeat. 0.7% of the world's population control 41% of the world's wealth. Back home, only 8,500 Kenyans have wealth worth a million dollars or more. Only 8,500. The world cannot continue with this serious inequality. In fact, for those of you who like economics, there is a professor in France called Thomas Piketty, who has written a famous book, Capitalism in the 21st Century. And he is trying to address this issue of inequality. Even the Pope today, when he was addressing young people in Kasarani, he talked about this issue, inequality. The world cannot continue being unequal because it will trigger events that can lead to the end of the world. There's a mad group called ISIS. ISIS is a band of people, there are only 10,000 of them from all over the world. They come in the name of religion, they come in the name of a few tribes in the Middle East, but they are a group of people who are excluded for generations. That's all. The world excluded them. We are paying the price today for that exclusion. The world cannot afford to exclude a section and expect to live in peace. What does it mean for an old Starian? Because you understand what poverty is, you should be the champions of policies that are against inequality, that are against 
discrimination that are against exclusion. I urge you, as an old starian, please be the champions of a new Kenya where everybody is included because you understand what poverty is. Has it been done anywhere in the world? Yes. The president, the former president of Brazil, called Lula, he designed policies that brought out of the slums 10 million Brazilians. You might say 10 million Brazilians is less than 10% of the population. Fine. But that is a quarter of Kenya's population. If it can be done in Brazil, it can be done anywhere in the world. Lee Kuan Yew of Singapore, who inspired Vision 2030 in Kenya, was able to, in, his, in one single generation, to move Singapore from a third world country to a first world country. In fact, Singapore's GDP per capita today is the third highest in the world, $56,000. For 50 years, Kenya was only able to move its GDP per capita from $440 to 1200 even after rebasing. It is possible. What does it mean? It requires leadership. Since you went to a world-class school of privilege, I am urging you to provide leadership wherever you are to make sure that Kenya is an inclusive society. That is your responsibility. You can't escape it and use every means possible to make sure that this happens. Stare gave you an opportunity to be of good character. The Stare way is about inclusion. As we support the school, we give back the school is about inclusion. Never forget that because Griffin, if he was here today, would have told you the same thing. There is a moral crisis in this country and our society is decaying. I watched our president on Wednesday and he was asking the Pope, pray for me, I have a challenge of corruption. I look at him and say, if you had a few old Starians, that prayer would not have been necessary. <laughs> I'm glad Nyakera is here. He's going to be the PS for transport. And we hope that he's going to do the study anyway. Inclusion. The third one is climate change. For me, this is a pet topic because for eight years I ran a conservation organization, KWS. And I never did biology in university. I was in the business school. And in the business school you are taught to think of only profit. But when I arrived at KWS, I was shocked at the state of the planet. My brothers and sisters, the world today is in peril. I am not sure that the planet will be habitable to your fourth generation after you. Remember, there is no planet B. We have no spare part of another planet we can go to. We have exploited this single home in the name of Mendeleo. Each of us is chasing GDP per capita, extracting as much carbon from the earth because we want to drive bigger cars. But remember, our only home that we have ever known is in jeopardy. I'll give you examples. 
California is just recovering from a drought of four years. Supposing we had a drought for four years in Kenya, what do you think will happen? <laughs> it didn't rain in California for four straight years. The glaciers are melting. And you just need to visit Mount Kenya or Kilimanjaro for you to see it. We have rising temperatures. It is estimated by 2100, some parts of the planet will not be livable because temperatures will have risen by just three degrees Celsius. What does it mean for you as an Australian? Australians are about providing leadership. I would like to see some of you play your rightful role in this world. Wherever you work, I would like the language of sustainability to be part of your vocabulary. How do we sustain the planet? How do we make sure that 10, 20, 100 generations after us will find a planet worth living? How do we make sure that the human race does not go extinct. Remember, we are no different from the dinosaurs. They lived here 65 million years ago. They thought they had conquered this planet, but the planet conquered them. As Wangari Madai used to say, nature is unforgiving. It's our responsibility, all Australians, to take care of this planet because there is no plan B. There is no planet B. The fourth one and final one is Africa. Africa is 54 countries. They were divided randomly in a conference in Berlin in 1884. It was a two-year conference, and the people who divided it, some of them had never stepped in Africa. That's history now. We cannot reverse it. However, it is our home. This home of ours is truly big. Africa is 30 million square kilometers. And that means it is three times the size of United States of America. How can a continent which is three times the size of the United States be the poorest in the world? Why? America's GDP is $17 trillion. $17 trillion. The one of Kenya is $60 billion. Remember, there are different zeros, so make sure you put them correctly. <laughs> but if I give you more statistics about our continent. Africa is the youngest continent. The median age, the one that cuts the population into two, is median. Those of you who never did statistics, you know that median is an average, the age of 18 years. Compare with the oldest populations in the world, the oldest is Japan. The median age in Japan is 47 years. In a continent which is younger, has access to technology, Wi-Fi, and is a basic need. Now imagine a continent like that. It assumed it will win by doing the usual African thing, which is Typically, good luck, Jonathan, was shocked. Young people were fed up, and they said, we will show these old men what we are made of. So during the election, each polling station, they had young people with their forced the result. The electoral commission could not change it after that.
because they said, you try. For the first time in Nigeria, an incumbent lost the election. That's history now. Power of young people, access. 50 of the 54 countries in Africa either have oil or are prospecting for oil. Kenya, of course, has struck oil. 60% of the remaining arable land in the world is in Africa. Africa produces 5 million graduates every year. And 7 out of 10 fastest economies in the world in 2015 are in Africa. Of course, Kenya is not one of them. What then does this continent require, which is rich, which is young, which is exciting, and vast? This continent just wants leadership. Nothing else. The Starey Way is what this continent requires. Nothing more. I know most of you then are asking, how will we get there? If you look at the Kenyan scene, Nyakera is the only PS, nothing more, out of 46. <laughs> I'm not sure how many members of parliament, I only know a cough. And there is uh, Manzo from McQueen. And that's it. Who else? Lentomaga, Samburu North. Three out of a house of 350. And of the 47 governors, there's only one, Abdullahi in Wajir. So therefore, the Starey Way is not popular because, of course, our society doesn't like people who are straight. In Kenya today, all you just need to do is to rain some money and you are in, in parliament. My advice to you, as we then find a new path of providing leadership to our continent, is let us not give up the stray way for short-term gratification. Because because our time will come. So don't give up. Let us not burn things and be like the others because we think our time has come. Africa will hit a wall. The tipping point has been passed and it will definitely respect and embrace the Starey way. Let us continue to nurture it because our time will come. The Starey way will triumph over evil. So therefore, my final thoughts, because if you say too much, people will forget, is three things. Because then I've given you four challenges, please reposition yourself. And the only way you can reposition yourself is to know yourself. Leave the Starey way, leave the Starey brand, Acknowledge your competencies, acknowledge your weaknesses, respect yourself, respect God, respect other human beings. It doesn't cost you anything, it is just the character you are taught in Stare. Number two, extend opportunity to others. It's your responsibility to extend opportunity to your core family, the Stareans in our midst. The two schools is your core family. Please extend a hand of friendship. Please mentor those who are in the Stare schools. And remember Griffin's last words to the school. And I'm sure some, most of you remember that. It was read during his funeral. It is the right thing to do. 
giving back to society, giving back to the old boys, the old girls, is your responsibility. Please do. And when you do that, if you know yourself, you lead a good life and extend to opportunity to others, you will live with this maxim that your best pillow is a clear conscience. If you have a clear conscience, you sleep well, you live long, and you'll definitely go to heaven. And number three, please be gentle with nature. I'm repeating this because I have experience, because I was in environment. Wangari Madai got the Nobel Prize for peace because somebody connected two things for the first time, the state of the environment and a peaceful world. The two of them she was able to connect. And remember, she was never an environmentalist. Those of you who know her, she was a vet anatomist. But she took environment as a passion. And she said, my little thing is to plant trees. I'm asking all the old Starians, plus their friends today, what is your little thing to protect this fragile planet of ours? It could be helping somebody feel good. Happiness. Helping somebody to be free. That is your responsibility. Each of you must have your little thing. Do it well. Like Griffin used to say, whatever you are given, that coffee cup, do it like nobody else has done it before. So know yourself, extend opportunity to others, and be gentle with nature. If you do those simple things, you will extend the stare way across the world. And I can assure you, as all Stareans, you will definitely rule the world. It has been said that astronomy is a humbling and character building experience. There is perhaps no better demonstration of the folly of human conceit than this distant image of our tiny world. To me, it underscores the responsibility to deal more kindly with one another and to preserve and cherish the pale blue dot, the only home we have ever known. And probably to paraphrase Carl Sagan, the only way we have ever known, the Stare way. Thank you very much. This is why when you entrust an old Starehian with a job, you know it's going to be done very, very well. Please let us recognize Julius once again. <laughs> there are some scary things that he shared with us, especially that issue of technology and, uh, and a fridge. That, uh, that can tell how much you have in your pocket, your credit worthiness, your age, all those details. So you can imagine if you were to come to that fridge and then it tells you, Peter, 